Look, Ryan Reynolds would be the ultimate dream guest. Let's go. Hello and welcome to MVP, the marketer's most valuable perspective, a podcast by State of Social and Dear Storyteller. We are here. We are live at Optus Stadium at State of Social 2022. And for the next 20 minutes, we are going to be deep diving into the most valuable perspectives of none other than the woman herself, <laughs> the founder, the visionary, uh, the creator of State of Social, Miss Meg Coffey. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hello. Thank yes. you for having me. <laughs> How are you this time of year? Is there any, anything big on in your world? No, you know, just doing a couple of things, hanging with a few people, you know, <laughs> as you do on a Tuesday and Wednesday, right? Has it been a tradition every year that, that the day before you've just said on Twitter, got a little something going on tomorrow, a few people are going to be there? Yeah. Yeah. It's a joke because I, I mean, I can't take myself too seriously on it or I'll psych myself out. I'll get like nervous, mm -hmm. right? If I, I think the first year I said, you know, I'm doing the very biggest thing of my career, the biggest thing I've ever done and, and I'm scared shitless, <laughs> um, which is very honest. Yeah. And then ever since then, I'm, it's not that I've played it down, but it's that I've just sort of been like, yeah, I'm doing a thing. It's just <laughs> this thing I got to do, you know, once a year. I like it. It's good fun. Um, five. Five years now. Yes. This monumental little baby of yours. Uh, Meg, it's an incredible feat. And I was talking to Ren Lamerle, uh from Bonfire yesterday at the drinks afterwards. Yep. And he said to me, every year I think she couldn't make it bigger. And once again, you've managed to make it bigger and better this year. Is it just like that old adage that everything's bigger in Texas? Or is there something deep within the psyche of Meg Coffee that just makes you want to put on one hell of a show? Like, <laughs> what is it? What drives you on this? Um, I'm crazy. <laughs> uh, I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> um, I... Well, I want to make it Apex Biggest, right? The goal has always been to make it Apex Biggest. And so I will not be done until I reach that. You know, when I started, we didn't expect the pandemic. So when I started, look, when I started, it was only ever meant to be one year and then it was going to be two and then it was five. So it was going to be just five because I figured conferences were changing and after five years, we'd be done. Didn't expect the pandemic, right? So that changed everything. And now I won't stop until we're Apex Biggest. And then even when we do reach that, I don't know. We'll see what happens, right? There will be another moonshot somewhere in the distance that you'll get your eye on and chase after that as well. I love that. That that ambition has been something that has always kind of been there, that little twinkle in your eye, and I, 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 it's something that I love about you. We've worked together for the past three of these. I started off as a panel member and then ran a workshop last year, and this year even more involvement. I've been honoured to be able to be a part of it and, and to see it grow and see it change over the course of the year or years. Um, and I feel like in that time, I've got to know you a little bit. I think you're fiercely passionate. Uh, you tell it like it is. Very much so. <laughs> you're a dynamo and you have this uncanny knack for being able to spot and platform really good talent. Thank you. And so I just wanted to ask, what's something that people might not know or might assume incorrectly about Meg Coffee? Are we PG? Um, <laughs> that I'm evil or that I'm a bitch? And I'm not. I'm just very direct. And I tell you exactly what I think. And you don't have to like what I think. You don't have to agree with what I think. But for some reason, I don't have a filter. <laughs> and I don't necessarily like it about myself. But I'm also old enough to realize that this is just who I am. And I think the reason I'm so direct and so passionate is because I'm so passionate, right? Is it's, it's because I want the best for everybody or I want the best for everything. I don't know how to not be the best. I don't know how to not show up and do my job. And so when you don't do yours and that impacts me, I will let you know. Mm. And I, I, but I'm, so that sounds horrible, but once you actually get to know me, I'm, the most loving, nicest, caring, will do anything, go to the ends of the earth for you. It's just you have to get through that initial wall, I think. I think you also expect people to work as hard as you do. 100%. <laughs> and you work hard. 
like when you're in pursuit of that vision and pursuit of that goal, that's mm. something that you have an absolute commitment to and you hope that everybody else has an absolute commitment to it as well. And I struggle with that. You're, you're spot on. And it has taken a lot of time in therapy, not going to lie, to realize that not everybody does work as hard as I do. And I can't expect everyone to work as hard as I do. Um, and that's okay. But I have to give myself a break and I have to give other people a break as well. I like that. Um, going into the fifth year, was there anything different that you wanted to achieve? And I guess in tandem to that, what about this year has most pleased you so far and why? Um, so on a very micro level, I wanted to achieve having everyone on stage because for the past couple of years due to COVID, we've had to have a lot of live crosses and video and it, there's nothing like having someone on stage. Um, I wanted to achieve bigger numbers than last year, which we achieved, which we have a 20% growth, which is just fantastic. Um, and I wanted to... I wanted to achieve a great event. I wanted to make people go, that was the best one yet. Mm. And I, and I think so far they have, I mean, we still have, we still have at this point, you know, another day to get through, you still got to deliver your workshop <laughs> That's true. Um, at this no point. Pressure. <laughs> no, but no, I think that, you, you know, you, you mentioned that I find people and give them a platform and that's very true. It's, it's important to me to find people who, who we haven't heard from before, who have different voices or different ideas and get, them to share with us because I think if we just listen to ourselves all the time we'll never learn mm. um, I can't pick a favorite child uh, everybody has been incredible this year there's so many so, like like seriously like every I think every session has had one key moment that makes you go oh yeah like yeah that was that was incredible yeah. yeah, I think something that I have been thinking about over the past sort of 24 hours is that sometimes within this industry, and I'm sure it's not just me, um, there are times where you can feel lonely and there's times where you can feel like beyond the four walls of your office, what is there? Is there really a community? Is there really a, a kind of cohort? And then you come into an event like this and you sit in a room and the alchemy of the energy and everybody in this room and their attention and especially when you've got someone speaking on stage like you talked about there physically in the room, it's electric. Yeah. And the DJ beforehand yesterday and everybody hanging out and, and getting coffee and getting, getting food and stuff just before it starts, it was electric. Yeah. And the excitement is tangible and I think that that's really amazing. Testament. Thank you. I mean, everything is about just doing it a little bit differently and a, lo a little bit better. I mean, you look at our acknowledgement of country, which is a very important tradition, a welcome to country or an acknowledgement of country. It's something very important that we do. Um, and I think a lot of times as a guest or a delegate, you tune out because it, you know, with respect is an older man speaking in a language that you don't understand and it's not engaging. And so you tune out. And so from the very beginning, I said, no, when we do our acknowledgement of country, it will be young kids and it will be creative. And from the very get go of the event we will get your brain thinking differently mm. and so I try to weave that in to everything we do is is get you think differently Th those was college, college kids did an awesome job again this year so 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 good um, I know it's a bit early to get into it but do you have a vision for what the future will look like are you already making plans oh, yeah. for next year oh I've already yes <laughs> I nearly gave you a secret there. Uh, <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't, I can't give you my secrets away. Yes, there is a future. Okay. Um, what it looks like is still to be delivered. I like it. I like it. I like that we're not saying, maybe I'll do this again at this point. I'm, I'm like that the future is confirmed. Um, no. you it's too good not to. People are yes. having too much fun and it, it is, I, um, I'd be bored if I stopped now. Plus, I haven't reached the dream yet, right? Exactly. So, got to reach the dream. I love that. Um, last question before we jump into some quick fire questions. You've become such an institution in this town in a lot of ways, uh, almost becoming the voice of social media. Your news credits will certainly... Almost becoming. Well, okay. Your news credits <laughs> would certainly attest to that. Can you share a little bit about your thoughts around personal branding, public relations, and the journey that you've been on to become such a go-to expert in this space? Um, honestly, it's because I tell it how it is. <laughs> and I say to myself every time I do television that I need to take some acting classes to get my facial expressions under control <laughs> because I just, and I'm sure if, if you have caught some of the video clips from this recording, you will have seen some of my <laughs> facial expressions. I'm not good at hiding them. Um, 
but I think that I, I am 100% exactly who I am. And I think that that comes through. I don't try to be somebody else. I don't, if I don't know something, I say that I don't know it, but I go on to figure it out. And then I come back to you with an educated answer. Um, I think that I am reliable and I say yes to pretty much everything because you just never know. You just never know. I think one of my favorite recordings that I've done was this is years ago. I was on ABC and they called me early. And I was like, you can't call me early. I won't be home. Like we can do this from my house, not a problem, but I won't be home until this exact time. And they called me early and I was driving. And so I had to pull over on the side of the road and prop my camera, my phone up (laughs) on my steering wheel on a water bottle and try and like shoot through the steering wheel. Right. And doing this live cross on national television. And I'm just whatever. Right. And I deliver it and I nail it. And Samantha Maiden sees it and she tweets. I'm convinced this woman is hiding in her car from her children. More power to her. And anyone that knows me knows I don't have children. So people lost it and they go, actually, she's probably hiding from her dog. (laughs) But that little piece of television then got seen by so many people and has been the catalyst for so many other opportunities that I've had. That's so kind of history of here and now, yeah. uh, hiding from children or dogs on camera and live news crosses. It certainly become something post COVID world. Um, yep. <clears throat> I, uh, I love that. Um, <laughs> I also think that there couldn't have been two more perfect people on stage yesterday when you asked Adam Ferry a question and he went, no, nah, don't know. <laughs> so I was like, could have been either one who yeah. <laughs> answered that really. I asked him a question on the podcast. He did the exact same thing. went, no. Yeah, Adam. <laughs> I'll come a, back to you once I figure it out. Yeah, I wonder that he started this whole thing as well, being the opening <laughs> speaker of your first state of social. Yeah, no. Look, Adam tells it exactly how it is as mm-hmm. well, and I think you know those people are rare and they can be abrasive at times, but you got to love them anyways. Um. All right, let's jump into some quick fire questions. Oh no. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, question number one: Where do you go to learn about marketing? Online. Where on <laughs> everywhere? I was my initial. If you, if you'd said one word, I probably would have said Twitter. That's mm-hmm. where I start. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also uh, I'm I'm a voracious consumer of media. I watch a lot of television. I watch a lot of news. Yeah. I watch. Um, I am on my phone all the time. It's funny, David Ray said the exact same thing when we recorded with him yesterday. I am a voracious consumer of media. That's a good habit to have, apparently. Yeah. Um, What's a small brand you love and why? Oh, there's so many. There's so, um, look, I think, I mean, that's a hard one to put me on the spot. I, 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 first one that comes to mind, you don't have to thank everyone. (laughs) No, 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 no. I'm just trying to think like, you know, I've been doing some online shopping lately, trying to get Mm. some things ready to go from home. Like, cause I, I'm heading overseas for a month for the first time since COVID. Um, and so I've, I've had to buy, you know, like an Eagles beanie and some sweatshirts and, you know, just all like the stuff (laughs) that you take home to overseas guests. And it's been fascinating. The, various levels of shipping and customer service and, and just the way that a lot of this like DTC, these DTC brands work. One hat locker. I've never heard from them. I think I ordered it Sunday night. It was at my house yesterday, which is like what, two days. Mm -hmm. I live in Perth. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen. (laughs) Right. So like, that's absolutely amazing. And now, um, my sister who will not be listening to this until it's released, um, has an amazing Eagles beanie. Awesome. Right? So that, that's really cool. That's amazing customer service compared to a brand who I won't mention who <laughs> I've ordered three weeks ago and I'm still waiting. The question is who you love, Meg. It's okay. We don't have to mention But do you know what brand. I mean? Like yes. I think there's some brands that are doing it really well. and <laughs> Others. Yeah, I get it. Um, <laughs> if you That's okay. If you could spend four hours with any marketer or business person in the world, who would you choose? Oh. For uh, killing me, you should have given me notice on these questions. Um, that's why I'm good on TV. I get I get them beforehand. No, I'm kidding. Um, I can't. There isn't just one. I want to I want to split that into eight half hour sessions, mm-hmm. and just to have an opportunity to pick the brains of a lot of people. 
Um, and I don't necessarily think they need to be straight business or marketers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like Adam, he's a, he's a consumer behaviorist, mm -hmm. but he's also a marketer, right? So it's, I think anyone that's really deep in philosophy and English and, and those kinds of things. Um, You've got Miles Pollard talking today. Oh, he, about persuasion. That's going to be incredible. Um, we were talking about boats in the Kimberley yesterday. You know, I mean, I got, a couple of years ago, we had Chris Messina, the gentleman who invented the hashtag, um, and this is actually the, so August 24th is 2007 is when the hashtag was invented. So we're about what, like 20 years, I don't know. I can't do math. <laughs> sure. Um, anyways, so, but having conversations with Chris Messina are just absolutely incredible because one second you're talking about like human history and then you're talking about open relationships and then you're talking about like the most incredible technology that you've ever had. Mm. And you're like, your brain is fascinating. Mm. And I like those kind of people. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I feel like we've had a lot of those conversations over the last two days. I mean, when we asked about a small brand that Susanna George loved yesterday, she talked about Normal, this new um, brand of sex toy that's come out and very sex positive and um, that they have a almost uh, like itiner uh, like educational curriculum about sex on, as, as awesome. part of their, their marketing. Wild, wild times. It's amazing to speak to people who just aren't afraid to go fully broad with you and speak about so many different things, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, is there an emerging customer behavior that you think will be highly influential over the next decade? I think there's an emerging customer hate behavior of being interesting. <laughs> Whether or not that will be over the next decade, I don't know. I think yeah. I think it's a fascinating time in the level of personalization. Mm -hmm. And I know... Uh, Give, please personalize my stuff. Like, give me the stuff I want. Give me the ads I want. I literally bought a suitcase that I didn't know I needed in four <laughs> clicks on Instagram the other day, right? But like, give me the things, and that's being delivered tomorrow. I'm impressed, right? Um, give me the things I need. I'm all for personalization. You know, we joke about not wanting to be tracked, yet we wear the Apple watch and you put the, the Apple tag on your car keys. Um, where I think that that is going to backfire is I think we are going to move towards some privacy and wanting some privacy. Yeah. And I think that um, people are going to feel rather overexposed and um, the customer behavior will be understanding the value of their data and being far more reluctant to give you that data mm -hmm. at the benefit of the personalization. Yeah, I get that. Um, is there a major public opinion that has flipped recently where you feel as though marketing or communications played a crucial role? Um, my cheeky answer would be Instagram. Yes, when Kylie and Kim complained about the direction of Instagram wow. and the power of their influence stopped wow. the change in Instagram. Yeah. I think that Instagram at the moment is being bullied <laughs> into submission. You know, you look at what happened. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg released his vision of what the metaverse was and everyone was like, that's not cool. And three days later, he was like, it was taken at a quick shot. Here's what it's actually going to look like. And it just feels like, I don't know, you know, Instagram is is releasing be real features. It just feels like they're being bullied. And, and yeah, so I think that your question about has there been an instant that marketing has changed something? I think, yeah, I think that, I think the users are starting to revolt a bit mm. and, and Instagram is n not winning. I think you're right as well. Um, I'm going to ask you two more questions. There's one more quick fire question and then one just, just wrap up, just funsies. Um, when you think of the term prized possession, Mm. Um, what's the first branded thing that comes to mind? And uh, while you think about that, I'll give you the follow-up. Do you remember the sp specific ad or piece of marketing that convinced you to buy it? So when you've said, what's your prized possession? That's my dog, <laughs> right? But then when you say the brand and, and say that again, was there something yeah, that- the, the, When you think of the term prized possession, what's the first branded thing that you think about? So I'm, I'm guessing that your dog isn't branded. <laughs> I mean, Henry is a brand. He has Henry his own social. Himself. You branded him, okay. Um, a luxury product, probably. Like a prized possession to me is, is yeah. I, 
I know the pr- first piece of advertising that ever influenced me was the absolute ads mm. back in the nineties. And I was obsessed with them. And that's what made me want to get into advertising. Mm. What was it about them that stood out? Uh, the so creativity, much? the yeah. incredible, how you could take a bottle and make it look so many different ways mm. and have it apply, you know, as a young kid just going, and it was fascinating because it's alcohol advertising mm. and my mother was very wary about it, <laughs> but at the same time she understood that I appreciated the art Yeah. because um, in the 90s is when they were doing all the incredible styles of bottles and, and they were print campaigns and it was just, it was fascinating. I don't have an answer to your question. That's okay. I like that answer anyway. That was definitely gave me an answer to, to what influenced you and got you into advertising in the yeah. first place. I love that. Yeah. Um, my final question, and it kind of is a sneaky kind of backdoor into your non-answer about who you would spend four hours with. Is there a speaker that you would like to get to State of Social in the future that you haven't already? Maybe they're going to listen to this. Maybe they're going to see it. And maybe this is going to be the thing that tips them over the edge. Yes. Can you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <sighs> look, Ryan Reynolds would be the ultimate dream guest. Let's go. Um, yeah. Maximum effort. Let's go. There's nobody that beats the marketing that maximum effort is doing right now and the brain and, and the team behind. And it's not just Ryan, right? It's the team at Aviation Gin. We had Adrian Molina speak last year and that man is brilliant. And, and the team, the creative team at maximum effort, um, George and, and, and those guys are, are brilliant. And I think that, yeah, their take on advertising and pushing the limits and, and the way that they're changing the game would be a pinnacle. Well, you heard it here, folks. Um, you've basically been watching this podcast for the last eight episodes thinking this guy looks like the wish version of Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> um, so it's probably about time we get the real thing. Ryan, if you're out there, give us the real deal. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Meg. This has been MVP, the marketer's most valuable perspective. Leave us a rating and review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we hope to be speaking to you very soon. Congratulations on a great show, Meg. Thanks, Mike.